Hey guys, and welcome back to my kitchen. But in case this is the first time you're stopping by, my name is Gina, and I am a wife and mother from the Midwest, and I enjoy cooking fresh meals for my family, and sometimes I make videos of my recipes and I post them here on YouTube. Wow, that was a mouthful. So today, it is a frigid day in Chicago. It is the beginning of December, and I wanna get our Christmas tree up today, um, and we're gonna try to go to our town's tree lighting and just do all sorts of fun stuff. So I wanted to get something in the crock pot so that I don't have to worry about dinner lately, lately, later. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna be doing a half batch of a soup that I haven't made in a couple of years. So this is kind of a let's wing it, but not really, because I mean, I haven't made it in a long time and I'm going off the top of my head. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our ingredients. So we are gonna be using beef stew meat today. So I have one pound and I'm gonna go ahead and get that chopped up into smaller soup sized pieces before we brown it off. Um, we have, sorry, this is a new phone, and I guess I don't have to get that close. Um, three yellow Yukon gold potatoes. I don't know why it's so hard for me to talk today. Anyways, yellow Yukon gold potatoes. I've got four or five carrots right there, one stock of celery. Uh, I would say that's a smallish white onion, but you could use white or yellow, whatever you have. We're gonna use about three cloves of fresh garlic, uh, about half of a package of those baby Bella mushrooms. And then for creating our broth, we're gonna need a little bit of tomato paste, some beef stock, and a little bit of red wine, which is totally optional. Um, it will cook off because we're gonna cook it for a long time in the slow cooker the alcohol but if you prefer you can just substitute it with water or additional beef stock if you have it um, and then to season everything up we're going to be using obviously some salt pepper a little bit of thyme and some bay leaf and then in the end I'll throw in some fresh parsley uh, which I don't have out right here and then also we're going to be of course needing barley because this is a beef barley soup so this is medium barley this is not the quick cooking barley um, because we're going to be cooking this all day so um oh also we're going to be needing some flour because i'm going to dredge our soup pieces in flour before we brown them off so oh look at my new cabinets they're so organized i got these in black friday and it was my favorite deal so i really gotta get used to filming farther away sorry guys this is my first time using my new phone for my video um so in any case oh i also forgot to mention that i will be adding at dinner time like right before about 30 minutes before i serve it some uh frozen veggies just like some frozen peas and corn just because i feel like it gives it a little extra zhuzh it looks nicer so let me go ahead and get my veggies prepped um, and the beef chopped up so I can show you what it looks like after we brown it off. And basically we're just tossing stuff in the slow cooker and waiting for it to do its magic. Okay, so I wanted to quickly jump on and just show you the stuff that I'm just going to dump in the crock pot without any additional cooking. Um, so this is our four to five carrots. And I don't normally chop things in this rustic of a faction fashion but I just wanted this soup to be very like hearty and comforting um so I mean nothing fancy here like where I could I chopped them into small rounds so like if you're using a baby carrot maybe just cut the baby carrot into three little chunks um and if you're using big carrots like I did like some of them like the stem end you're gonna have to go ahead and uh cut it in half and do circles for the tip and then quarter the rest of it to get pieces that are similar in shape and size because you want them to cook evenly. And look, I'm wearing my fun partridge Christmas nightgown. Isn't that a fun tidbit about me? <laughs> um, then for our celery, uh, if you've watched my videos before that you, you will know that I really just don't like to eat chunks of celery. Like I totally appreciate what it does for sauces, soups, stews, and flavor of dishes, but I don't like to chew pieces of it, um, particularly ones that are still crisp so I have just go went ahead and I quartered my piece of celery lengthwise and then minced it um, and then for our potatoes uh, these are in larger size because Yukon Golds tend to be softer potatoes um, and I made caldo de pollo earlier in the week in my instant pot recipe and these particular potatoes which were not overcooked when they were red potatoes were overcooked with the yellow potatoes so I just made them a little bit larger because I don't want them to turn into mush in the broth so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and toss this into our slow cooker and then prep our garlic, our onion, and our meat, and I will be right back. Side note, I totally forgot about our mushrooms. <clears throat> I hope I'm not getting a cold again. I have like this weird frog in my throat, so sorry guys. Um, I went ahead and I just uh, rinsed off the tops of these baby Bella mushrooms, and then I always pop off the little stem just like 
Let's see if I can do it with one hand. Like that. Uh, and that's just a personal preference. I don't know. I just think they taste better like that. <laughs> um, but you never want to submerge your mushrooms because they do absorb a lot of water because they're a fungus and they will get mush. Um, so I just rinsed off the top and then patted them dry and then sliced them thin. Um, and yes, you can buy a package of them pre-sliced, but they're going to be sliced really thick. Um, and I don't want these to be like a texture thing. I want them to just be more of a flavor element that kind of melts into the broth. And I just feel like you get nicer slices and I just really enjoy slicing mushrooms. It's like the texture of slicing it is just really a fun thing for me. I really like cutting them. So if you've never sliced your own mushrooms, go ahead and try. So this was about six baby bella mushrooms and I'm just tossing these into the slow cooker as well. And if you don't like mushrooms, don't skip them in this recipe because they really add something to the broth. Um, go ahead and then you could just mince them like into like tiny pieces like you would do like your onions or your garlic. Um, and they'll just basically melt away into the broth and you won't notice them. So don't forget your mushrooms. Okie doke. So I have our onion chopped up and I added a little bit of olive oil to my pan. And I just browned off the onion for a minute. Um, the little bit of caramelization will actually add a lot more flavor to our soup. Um, and then I tossed in our garlic, which is just minced. Not ridiculously small. I mean, it's going in the slow cooker, so it's basically going to melt away. And now we're just cooking off that raw garlic flavor. And then we're going to go ahead and add this to the slow cooker. And this step is really not necessary, but since we're going to brown our beef and the pan was going to be out and dirty anyways, um, I actually just decided to do it. So, I mean, if you're going to make this in the Instant Pot, that would be a great option. I just wouldn't recommend cooking it as a slow cook function because every time I've tried to use the Instant Pot as a slow cooker, <clears throat> it hasn't worked. Like... I have a famous chili recipe that I make all the time in the slow cooker, and it was, like, basically raw at the end of the day, so whatever. But if you wanted to, like, sear your beef and, like, brown off your onions and then use it under the pressure cooker function, I'm sure it would work great. I just don't have any advice on a cooking time because I've not tried it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dump these into our slow cooker. Uh, I went ahead and I chopped up our beef, which is in smaller soup-sized pieces. Uh, these will cook off so they'll get a little bit smaller. Um, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of flour to this and a healthy pinch of salt and pepper. <clears throat> and then go ahead and just mix it up before I add it to the pan after I take out the onions. Alright, so it actually ended up being probably about two tablespoons of flour because I just did like two pinches. Um, and probably about a half of a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Mix it up and then I cleaned out our pan and added a little bit of olive oil to it. And now we're just going to break this up and let it sit. I'm going to jiggle around my oil a little bit. Sorry guys, I'm getting used to this new camera and for some reason it's like way closer up the view on it. So I got like holding this next to my face <laughs> while I'm filming. So if anybody has any tips about the new Samsung, the camera, I noticed it on Instagram too. Like when I do like the selfie way, it's like all up in my face. So anyways, let's go ahead and make sure everybody is split apart as best as we can. And then we're going to let it sear because we want to have a nice crust on the outside of the meat. And then the flour is also going to help in thickening our broth. So being that I'm cutting my recipe in half, hopefully it's not too thick at the end of the day. Like I might need to add a little extra beef broth uh, or some extra water depending on the consistency. But I will be back when this is all browned off and we're ready to start adding everything else to the crock pot. All right, so our beef has been seared off. Um, this it doesn't look as dark in the camera as it is in person, but there's a nice uh, sear on some of the sides. And um, in addition to like giving it some extra flavor, uh, basically I feel like this step uh, shouldn't be skipped because you could just toss your meat right into the slow cooker. But like this soup doesn't have as much like of a brown color as like let's say a beef stew. And I feel like um, beef stew meat when it's cooked uh, is very gray. Like it doesn't look attractive. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and deglaze this pan by turning it back on high with my red wine. Sorry guys, I'm trying to do stuff with one hand again, so bear with me. So this is sizzling and I just want to get up all those little brown bits. And let's see, I'd say that's about half of a cup. 
And if you're really worried about the alcohol content, you could let this boil off. But I'm really just trying to get all those little brown bits in here. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Carefully pour that into our crock pot. And all of my measuring cups are dirty from yesterday, so I'm just gonna estimate that this is about a half of a cup of pearl barley, medium barley, not quick cooking barley. Uh, I forgot to add, sometimes I do this, I add just like a little squirt of Dijon mustard, um, and it gives it a nice little bit of an acidity. So I'd say that's probably about a teaspoon, half of a teaspoon. Let me close up this wine. This is my favorite wine. It's only about $8.99. It's called Apothic Crush, and it is <laughs> delicious. So uh, we went ahead and added that in. I tried to open my beef stock. All right, so the rest of the stuff we're going to be adding is thyme, bay leaf, salt, pepper, some beef broth and our tomato paste. So let me go ahead and get these things opened up and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got to wrap this up. My children are on some cray cray. So essentially I have about two tablespoons, maybe a little bit more of tomato paste. Uh, I've added one bay leaf. I've added about, <laughs> hey, stop it. Uh, about a half of a teaspoon to a teaspoon of thyme. Uh, and then some more salt and pepper and then I've just been seasoning on the way up so I haven't been measuring but I'd say if you're just gonna add all of your salt in right now it'd probably about be about a teaspoon to start and then I'm going to be adding four cups of beef stock to this which is not squirting out very nicely there we go hang on girls I'm almost done Or we will open the door. One second, okay? All right, so we just want to go ahead and get everything mixed up. I'll be back in a second to show you what it looks like. All right, guys, this is what it looks like. Hey, girls, can you be quiet for a second? This is what it looks like. We're going to go ahead and set this on low for... Go around, you're being very rude. All right guys, this is what it looks like. Everything's nice and incorporated. I'm going to put the lid on it. I have set my crock pot for low for six hours and this could cook anywhere from six to eight hours depending on if you double the batch or the size of your meat. Um, so I'm gonna stir this after about four hours. So it's 10, 11, 12, one, two. So at about nap time, I'll give it a nice stir and then put the lid on and let it go until dinner time. Um, and it should be ready. And then about a half an hour before serving, I'm gonna add some uh, peas and corn to it, frozen peas and corn, just to make it look a little more fancy because our vegetables are gonna lose their water and sweat down and it's gonna become very uniform in color, like browns and things like that. So anyways, I'll see you later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our finished product. Um, I didn't film myself putting in the peas and the corn because that is optional, uh, but I did about a half of a cup of each and I put it in 30 minutes before it turned off and this has been six hours of cook time with stirring once at four hours. And I added a little bit more black pepper and I actually ended up having to add a little bit extra beef broth because I do want this to be you know a little bit loose because it's a soup it's not a stew but if you like it really thick like that that's fine um totally up to you but I'm just gonna add a little bit more so I probably added like two cups of beef stock to this um let me take out that bay leaf now while we see it and then I'm just waiting for my husband so this just really smells good um, between the mushrooms and the red wine and oh, very perfect for a crisp winter day. Beef looks nice, still together, didn't fall apart, which is good. I'm sure it's super tender, um, but it's nice that it's not all shredded in there because that's not what we're going for. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop the lid on this, wait for my husband to get home, and then... Uh, we're going to serve it with some hot crusty bread and uh, some fruit on the side for the girls. So we will be back with our taste test. All right, guys, this is our finished product. Everything's cooked nicely and it's pretty good. 
I would say I think I added a little too much barley because I eyeballed it because it's a little bit on a slimy texture. So I would probably add like one third of a cup of barley next time as a side note. Uh, but it's pretty good. Daniel, what do you think? Delicious, really good. All right. All right, guys. Thank you for watching my video. If you like it, I'd appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you love it, go ahead. Ooh, you're so sweet today. Tell them to subscribe. Say subscribe. Say thumbs up. PV. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a great day. You guys are real cute.